Hello everyone, welcome back. I always feel a little bit weird when I don't do my squeaky hello, but shouldn't always be so squeaky. <laughs> I don't know, it just feels kind of natural that as soon as I sit down and turn the camera on, I just want to go, I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do it. No. Anyway, we are back with another wid video. We're back with another video because I am back in York. Not sure if you can even tell because I'm in a different room. It's very overcast and grey outside, so I've got my ring light on to kind of get the best lighting possible. I'm also filming this video before I film my German video. Normally I do it the other way around. Because there's a bit of a time thing. I want to get the English video out before my German video. And the reason, we're going to get right into it. We're not even going to talk about what I'm wearing, which you've seen before if you watch my videos. We're just going to go right into the reason that I need to get this video out as soon as possible. We are doing a giveaway. <laughs> it's my first one. And it's going to be, I think, safe to say, a bit different to normal giveaways. It is currently the end of October. I'm not going to quote the actual date because I can't remember. But soon we are into November. Advent calendars, yarn advent calendars are popping up everywhere, being all like they're shipping soon. Some of you might be all like, I couldn't afford an advent calendar, or I couldn't get the one that I wanted, or I couldn't make up my mind and then they were all sold out. Whatever reason there is for why you are unhappy about your advent calendar situation, that that's what my giveaway is. Now, I'm not saying... <laughs> Oh, I've bought extra advent calendars from, you know, hand dyers and here you go. Sadly, no. It's more that because I'm moving from York to Germany via Austria, which I think I hadn't mentioned, I have a lot of yarn I need to move. I've got a lot of yarn scraps and I've been working through them with my blanket and other things, but there's still a lot. And this is sort of inspired by someone else on YouTube. She only does videos in German. Uh, so her YouTube channel, pardon me, is called Sissy Will Wolle. Sissy wants wool, if you want it translated. And she's on Instagram as Trochilda underscore, I think. I'll have it all below. Um, and she's doing a sort of... It's not really a giveaway, but she's doing a... She's giving away an advent calendar to someone who, for whatever reason, doesn't have one, can't afford one, just wants one. Let's put it that way. Someone wants an advent calendar and she's going to give give one away. And she's asked people, do they want to step in and also give one away? And then she'll match them up with someone else who couldn't, who doesn't have one and wants one. And I was like, oh, I like that. I might volunteer. And then I was like, hang on, wait. Why don't I just make my own? So, that is what I'm doing. I have, ooh, I have enough yarn for four, and um, but I'm going to be kind of splitting it up how I do it. But all that has to happen, if you're interested, is literally just leave a comment with the word. Advent? Just mention the word Advent in the comment. I think that's all I'm going to ask for. Um, and then sometime soon before I leave the UK, I'm going to send those off. That's why, because I'm leaving soon, I need to get this out as soon as possible. So, I think I've made that all clear. You don't need to tell me why you want it or anything like that, if you've already got an advent calendar and you want another one, you can have one. I, I, I don't care who wins these. Um, and what you're getting, should explain that, is a 10 gram minis is what I'm doing, 24 of them, and then there's like an extra surprise for the evening of the 25th slash the morning of the 25th, depending on how you celebrate but also you don't have to celebrate Christmas if you want this I, I'm just calling it an advent calendar because that's just what I'm used to but it can also just be 
24 little treats and a bigger treat as the 25th one. And you can open it however you want. But so it's, it's all hand dyed yarn. It's all fingering weight yarn. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, it will be at least 10 grams for each color. They'll each be individually packed. So it is like an advent calendar, except you're just not getting it from one dyer. I've included a little note saying what the color is and what the dyer is. If I know for some of the colors, I can't give you a color name because there isn't a color name. But anyway, so I thought that would be a, a fun thing. So I'll leave all the information below. I'm probably going to put it on Instagram and stuff anyway, but um, that's just something I've been wanting to do a giveaway for a while and so now I've got this plus it helps me because then I've got less I need to take ship over but it's also nice to give back that's but yeah so it's sort of inspired by what CC Waller has done and that is it that should be all the information then again, if it's not all the information, I'll probably include more info in the description box. Leave a comment if you're confused. Email me. Message me on Instagram. Ugh, I will pick a winner at some point. And I can't give you an end date. It's literally just until I... Until the day before I leave, pretty much, is when I'm going to send it. So whoever has commented at that time <laughs> can win. Okay. Let's stop babbling on. Um, I'm trying to think. No, no, no. It's all good. Okay. What I'm wearing. I am wearing the Aurora sweater by Victoria Lewis, who is tiny teal handcrafted, if I'm not mistaken. Is it, I'm just checking if it's Victoria Lewis. Mm. Yes. And the yarn that I've used is the main brown that you can see. I've worn this before, but I'm just going to explain it anyway. The main brown is Auburn Biscuit by Shins Pies, and the mohair I've held with it is Golden Brown by Hook and Light. I think I used two skeins of both, but needed to use a different colored mini for the ribbing at the bottom from Pigment and Ply because I didn't have enough yarn. It's just a cropped one, but so it's a really nice raglan, decent sleeves, pretty much bracelet length. Um, but like I said in one of my previous videos, I've watched, I've worn it before. My brain. Okay. Let's start. I know what we're going to start with. I shared a while ago that my mum had bought me the kit for the Humla Bee Shawl by Lega from Fibre Tales. And it was the yarn from Wool and Twine and a bag from Blue Rabbit House. This one. Uh, from the Blue Rabbit House. I was not wrong. Uh, show that side because it's got the bee on it. And when I finally started this, I was currently not filming because, well, thesis. Oh, I haven't talked about that. I'll leave that for the end. Who cares? The advent calendar was the important thing. And I actually, I think I posted about it on Instagram at some point. I did it in about three days. And here it is. And I haven't blocked it yet. Vic is his way. But anyway, so if you haven't seen it before, it's got little bees at the bottom. So you do this beautiful stitch of making like bobbles and then these elongated stitches for the wings. You've also got a little bit of lace and then the rest is just garter. Now the reason I did it so quickly, it's also got a, it's called a pico edge. I think it is. That should look, with blocking it should look better but I will block it at some point. Um, You start from the longest edge so it's like bottom up. Typically you'd start a shawl here and then start to increase with this one. You cast on all the stitches, you do the pico edge, and then you start to decrease, work your bees, and then eventually you just reach this garter section where you just keep decreasing until you get right to the end. And then you just graft it together. I did 
So the kit came with three skeins of DK weight yarn. I... I, I think in the pattern it said you only needed about two and a half. So you could make the shawl a bit wider by just adding another 10 stitch repeat, I think it is, which is about a B. So I did that. And I think I only added 10 on each side, maybe 20 on each side. I can't remember anymore. So I still had a decent amount of yarn left at the end though. So I'm a bit annoyed that I wanted to make, I could have made it even bigger. Now the wingspan is over 180 centimeters. Now the reason I know this, not that I've measured it, is my arm span. We've just got some pilling. My arm span is 180 centimeters. And this is how, so there's, there's more than 180 because it should sit like that. I hope that makes sense. So it is quite wide and not very deep, which I really love in a shawl. I hate it when the length is the same as the width. Um, I like a triangular shawl where you get more wingspan, less depth, makes it easier to wear so you don't have as much bulk right in front when you're wearing it. Uh, I don't think I've worn it yet. I wouldn't exactly wear it with this jumper. I don't think the colors really work, but the wool is incredible. Like I said, it was the one from the kit from Woolen Twine, Woolen, Woolen Twine, or Wool, I will have it linked below. And it's a caramel color, I believe it is. And it's a BFL Masham, Masham. I always say Masham, Masham, BFL Masham base, which I love. It's so, it's, I think people would hate me if I said it was soft, but it's a rustic soft. So, it really is like not prickly, not like um, platelopy can be quite scratchy. It does soften up, but this is really nice. And I really want to make another one. I enjoyed it so much. Couldn't believe how quickly I did it. Ooh. I keep commenting on everyone's Instagram post when I see them do it. I'm like, I love the shawl. I'm just looking for an excuse to make another one because I really, really did enjoy it. Uh, the problem is, in some ways, I feel like this colour is just perfect. And when I try to think of what other colour I could do, I'm like, maybe a green? I don't know. But I've been meaning to show that off because I love it so much. <laughs> the bees. I really hope that Lega does some more designs with the bees. Because I think like a hat, a mitten, jumper. I would do them all. Loved it. But that's something I've been finished ages ago that I've been meaning to share. Now I'm not going to go through all the projects I've finished since I stopped recording. I can't remember when that was. Um, but I'm going to go through some of them. Because otherwise we'll be here forever. And I want to do shorter videos. Next up. The next thing I have, I think I've shared finished except it didn't have buttons on it. I've already shared it. I'm so sorry. This is the Fluff Nugget cardigan by Becky Sorensen. And the buttons that I chose, because you needed quite big ones, which made it quite hard to find any. These are ceramic buttons I ordered from an Etsy shop. I'll have a link below. But I love this cardigan so much. I have a feeling... Maybe I didn't show all the browns together. I don't know what's happening. All the neutrals. It's really big. It's really fluffy. I want to make another one because I think my gauge was very badly off, which means it's way bigger than it was meant to be. <laughs> but I don't really care because it's big and it's fluffy. Um, once again, it does not go with what I'm currently wearing. But I did this with neutered and yarn, and you can just see how big, big the sleeves are, how big the jumper, how much positive ease there is. And I think it wasn't meant to be like that. I think it was just the first time I'd done brioche for a garment, and I think with blocking, I did I even check my gauge? I might not have checked my gauge, but I had more than enough yarn. I think I had five skeins of this color. And I only used about, I think I used four, no, three. And I had a little bit left over of the, 
nope, I had five, one I have left, and then I've got a couple of scraps from another one. So I use just over, just under four. My brain. But I really love it. I haven't had a chance to wear it yet because the weather's only just now starting to get colder and I haven't really been in York and I haven't been bringing a lot of knitwear with me because some of it I'm just a bit too precious about traveling with, um, having to put it in the suitcase and stuff. But I love it. But I, I need another one. And this time I will check my gauge and I'll probably have to drop quite a few needle sizes. Which is interesting because I always thought with Becky's patterns that she's quite a loose knitter so therefore she goes for no she's quite a tight knit doesn't matter either way um i didn't think my gauge would be that far off but i think it is i think i measured it after i finished and i was like oops by the way i had more than enough yarn and i still like how it fits it's just a lot bigger and has a lot more positive ease than i had intended and i like the design of the original one because it's a bit more snug and fitted but that's another thing I finished recently. I've, like I said, I've got more finished objects, but I'm just gonna show a couple because I don't wanna spend, I could do a whole video just on the things I've been working on and finished since, not my previous video, but episode 15, because I think this is 17. Okay. Just gonna check my notes. Okay, that's all the finished things I'm just gonna share for now. Um, next, let's talk about the thing that is right next to me. I shared this last time. Um, God, I'm in the middle of a row. How am I? Oh, that's right, I'm doing short rows. So there's nothing I can do about it. I showed the spice cardigan I'm knitting for a friend of mine, um, who I've actually now seen. And I didn't finish it because I didn't want to stress. And I was like, I'll just send it before I leave. But... I did, it's not gonna look good because it's, I'm knitting the collar right now, but the sleeves are attached. I have steaked it. The pockets are sewn on and I'm just working the short rows for the collar. Um, and then we'll work the button band onto that. It's slow going now. I don't really know why. I, the steaking itself was okay. I was a bit rushed. Um, so, for the last, this is superwash yarn, even though it is Shetland wool, so it's grippier than your normal superwash merino, but not as grippy as a non-superwash yarn. So I was like, okay, so I'll have to use my sewing machine, which I did, but I used a straight stitch, and I should have used a zigzag, and I didn't go over it more than once, and so it's, I did try to kind of like pull the fabric apart, um, well, try and make sure that the stitch is just that the fabric lay really nicely. And then I also did a crochet reinforcement before cutting into it, but the crochet hasn't really held up because it's non-superwash yarn. Um, currently the sewn uh, reinforcement is holding up, but I've also gone and used a felting needle I have just in particular areas where I'm like, you look dangerous. <laughs> and I'm just a bit worried that it could unravel, but I know the more you kind of wear it, it felt more, even with the superwash yarn, it will start to felt. Um, and I might just have to go back a few more times certain parts with the felting needle because that's all I can do now. Can't really sew over it because I've already tacked down the steek um, and have started the collar, but it should be okay. Um, so last time I showed it to you, I was just before the pocket placement so that's an afterthought pocket. Um, and this was pretty much all I'd been working on for the most part since my last video. And I, I really like the pockets. I think they're really cute. And I made them a bit longer than the pattern said, just so... I don't know, I felt like if you want to put a phone in here, it wasn't quite long enough, so I made it a little bit longer. I made the body in general longer. Um, but everything else stuck to pattern. I did the sleeves the correct length because I didn't get to show these off last time because I didn't have them with me. But you do a really long ribbing 
And I quite like that for when you're knitting for other people because you can either then, they can leave it that way if they have longer arms than expected, or they can fold it a little bit, or they can fold it a lot if they've got very short, shorter arms than you thought. So I quite like that. Um, sizing wise, I think it's going to be really good, but because I was at the point where I'd reinforced the steak just before I left to visit my friend, but... I then did cut the steak and filmed it at his place and then had to pick up the stitches for the collar. Now he wants the final thing to be a surprise. He's sort of seen the yarn because I was like, I just don't care anymore. I can't, I don't want to hide it anymore. But there wasn't a lot of time to work on it and he didn't want me to work on it in front of him because then he would see it. And then eventually I was just like, well, the steak makes you uncomfortable. I want to reinforce that and didn't have a felting needle with me. So I was like, you know what, no. This is a gift for someone. I am not going to rush through it. It means I also get to block it properly with my blocking mats and use my soak wool wash and stuff. I was like, no, nope, no stress. We're going to take our time with it. So it's still around and I will hopefully film a little bit once it's actually done to show it off. Otherwise I might ask him like, do you want to film me some footage? We had talked about it when I was there, but didn't finish it, did I? <laughs> not that I really had a chance to. That's the spice cardigan. The other thing, just stuff everywhere. I just don't care anymore. The other thing I have been working on, once again, even though I shouldn't be, is the Illuminate sweater. So, the, that's the back. So this is by Andrea Mowry. Um, the cardigan was the spice cardigan, which I said also by Andrea Mowry. So the body is done and the first sleeve, almost done almost done. I've just finished the decreases and I'm about to change the needle size and do the ribbing. So the sl first sleeve is almost done um, and then it's just the last sleeve and blocking and weaving in a couple of ends where I had to... Um, so the stripes I've done by carrying the yarn up, um, which you can kind of see on the back but I really don't care. I'm like any difference will kind of block out anyway but the stripes just make it so quick <laughs> because you only have to do a couple of rows and then you're already changing color and I just love working with the Suri Hell double I think it's so nice but yeah so the back again um it shouldn't be long before I finish the sleeve I probably won't finish this before I have to pack up and leave but that is life. I still have a decent amount of the main colour left. So I've got this, which is probably about 20 grams. And then I've got two 50 gram balls, so 100 grams still here. And of the mohair, here probably in total have about 25 grams. And I've got another 25 gram one. So I think that should be more than enough to finish off. Well, I don't need any more, sorry. I don't know if it's still attached. It is still attached, but I'm done with the sari now. The ribbing is just in the uh, main sport weight yarn. And then it's just the other sleeve. So it should be good. Not much more to say about that one uh, because the stripes are just, well, the stripes. You do do that kind of like hack of making it sort of jogless where some people like with the litmus cow will lift up you knit one round in your new color and then you lift you slip the first stitch instead of knitting it and then it just kind of drags that up a bit more but andrea Mary does the other technique that i know which is she um, which i used in my ara sweater which i don't know i've shared either i think i have i'll share it at some point anyway of knitting one round and when you get back to your first stitch you pull up the stitch from the round below which is in your other color and you knit that and then it just kind of helps with not making such a stark contrast from one color to the other that's that one and then two more things one of them is I've shared this book before, Crochet Iconic Women, and I'm currently working on Ruth Bader Ginsburg. 
so you can see it there. Hopefully. Very shiny. So I've done the head. I've got the arms and the body and everything. I just need to finish off a bit of her hair, the collar, and then I can pull it together. So I will show you those bits very quickly. <laughs> it's going to look a bit creepy. <laughs> so here we've got the body. Oh, it's being blown out. Let's put it over here. So underneath, she's got... Eesh. So the robes are attached, but you can kind of see the trousers underneath. Trousers. So I need to attach her arms. <laughs> I've got both of them. I've also got her ears that I need to attach, which won't look like anything right now. Um, with her hair, I finished this bit, which just slips on. I need to attach that to her head. And then she gets a little little ponytail. So I've got one of these hair bits and I need two more. And that's currently what I'm up to. And I said that was it, wasn't wasn't it? Was it? I can't remember. Oh, and she she's getting her little collar as well, of course. Uh yes. So that's all I've left to do. So I'm hoping I can probably finish that later today, other than putting in, uh, making her some glasses and putting in some earrings and stuff. And then the other one I want to make is Rosa Parks because these are both a gift for someone that I know at uni and I think she'll really appreciate them. And it's a bit of a thank you for all the help she has given me. See so, you. Hopefully, I'll be able to start that one soon because I think I should be able to finish Ruth Bader Ginsburg today. The other thing I will hopefully be able to take a picture of at some point, but can't currently because I don't have it yet, is a friend of mine is going to make, hopefully in time, be able to make me two little signs that will say their names on it so they can stand up and the sign can stand up so that you can clearly tell who it's meant to be. Um... But that will hopefully work out um and that's being 3d printed and i'll share some more 3d printed stuff in a bit but first the other thing i've mainly been working on ooh, is so big and heavy this is a, the beginnings sort of of a baby blanket so i've got one two three four five colors um it's a free pattern from pearl soho so you start with this middle section and then you pick up stitches for, I think it's this section next. Then you work this one, then you work this one, then you work this one. And there's meant to be a whole nother layer, but I think I might stop after this one and then just do a bit of a border because I want to try and get it done as quickly as possible. And it's also just getting really hard to do it because of how heavy it is. I'm using uh, mainly... I think it's been the Crazy Sexy Wool by Wool and the Gang. But I've also got some of the We Are Knitters the Wool. So I'm thinking I might make the border in this one, but we'll see. I've got a couple of colours to choose from. Um, and it's just quite nice because I've had some of this yarn in my stash for a really long time and haven't didn't know what to do with it. So then when I found out a friend of mine was going to be having a baby... So many friends of mine having babies. I was like, okay, well, I'll try and get this one done before I leave. So we'll see if that happens. Um, train of thought gone. But, yeah, so I think I will just make it smaller. I was already making the biggest size, which is the... I think it's actually like a throw, not just a blanket. Like, it's even bigger than just a blanket. And I think the size of this is already quite big. And then just with a couple of stitches of the board I think that would be really nice so we'll see how that works out but once again hoping I can finish that very soon and before I leave because I don't want to have to send it I don't think there's anything to say about it it's really easy it's just garter stitch so it's a very easy project um but 
also a bit hard because there's some 12 millimeter needles and I just find you can't knit as quickly and as smoothly with such big needles, at least for me. But new things. First of all, because I mentioned the 3D printing just before, um, the friend I'm making, making the cardigan for has a 3D printer and was all like, do you want anything like 3D printed? Like I can do some knitting stuff. And so we had a look and I was like, nah, I don't need anything. And then I saw this yarn bowl. Oh, it's a bit reflective and shiny. It's a cat. And that's the tail bit. I might have to... Um, what is it? Paint over it? Or like put some resin or something on it? I can't remember what exactly he recommended. Just in case the yarn catches because it's still a little bit rough um it's mostly been kind of like filed down but it is still rougher than this for example but yeah so that was 3d printed and i think it was like one and a half days something like that um it was just so cool seeing it like slowly build up and then wake up in the morning and to be like the cat is done then i also i've got a couple of other bits uh the f i think no i think this this um the ball was the first thing but then we also he also printed me some stitch markers that actually you know lock and close which is awesome so i've got some of these star ones but some of my favorite ones uh, let me see are these ones they're not perfect just because um of how like small and thin they are but they're more lockable stitch markers but i don't know if you can see that Ugh. Ugh. it has the number eight on it and they range from i think it starts from like two up to ten and it's the size of the needle and i was like that is sort of genius because what you can do is use a stitch marker for example for beginning of round or just attach it to your work so you know what needles you're using <laughs> because i will often start a new project need the needle size and then sometimes either just put the caps on or uh use a different needle size on there and then i'll keep knitting and then be like this doesn't feel right why is my gauge different because i forgot which needles i was meant to be using so i've got quite a few of those which is which is quite nice um what else what else is there ah i have a bag so recently jen from castle view yarns kind of asked is anyone interested in sample knitting and i've done a bit of sample knitting now and i was like oh i could do it for you if you wanted it might just be difficult because with me moving to Germany and stuff about her sending the yarn to me or me sending the item back and then getting the yarn payment, whatever. And she was like, no, I think Germany should still be okay. It's not too expensive. And she was like, are you happy making me a shawl? And I was like, sure, more than happy. I've done a few shawls. I struggle with them a bit because I find them challenging, but I can totally do it, especially if it's for someone else. I'm better at that. So she sent over two skeins of her yarn for me to knit it in. So this is Agnes and this is Agatha and they're both on her sock base. So 75% merino, 25% nylon. And the shawl that I'm meant to be making is the the Breathe and Hope shawl by Casa Pinka. I'll include a picture. Um, so that's what I'm going to be using these two for. And we'll hopefully start that soon. I'm going to keep these out and not pack them in everything that's being moved so they'll be in my suitcase instead because I think then I want to try and get it done as quickly as possible um so that's something that's come in something else more recent I've still got old things to share that I never got a chance to share um but I, I just thought I'll share some of the newer things first M my parents came to visit recently um I'll talk about it was to do with my PhD defense but we'll talk about that later. And my mum, who's also a big knitter, 
uh, said she'd like to go for the button shop that's in York Duttons for buttons. So we did that and uh, bought some things. So I bought a bit of uh, Rikurumi stuff. Some of the colours that I've used for Ruth Bader Ginsburg um, were part of that. Some of it was also stuff I've ordered from Georgie before. But while there, I saw these. <laughs> so cute. So one of the first crochet things I ever did was a kit by Toft. And I saw this one at the knitting and stitching show, but was like, nope, nope, I'm not going to buy it. I'm going to walk away. And then I saw it in the Duttons for Buttons shop and I was like, oh, I really want it. And mum was like, oh yeah, you can have it. I was like, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. So that made me really happy. And uh, what else? I bought, well, my mum paid for everything, so I bought nothing. But the buttons for the spice cardigan are just some kind of plain black plastic ones because I thought they would best hold up with um, the person they're designed for. And I also saw that she was selling the new West Yorkshire Spinners Christmas colour, which is called Vintage Tinsel. And I'd seen someone else on YouTube show this yarn already. And originally I was like, no, I just don't think it's for me. But then I was like, oh, but it's quite cool and I want to try it. So I bought that and we'll hopefully, hopefully do some socks with them soon. But I think I'm going to have to pack it. There's, I can't leave too much stuff out because I've only got so much space in my suitcase. The next stuff is all, yes, all from the Wensleydale Long Wool Sheep Shop in Leyburn, apparently. Was it in Leyburn? I thought it was in Harrogate. No, no, it was in Leyburn. No, that's right. Um, when my parents came to visit, we hired, my dad hired a car and we kind of drove around the Dales for a day. And at one point we, we stopped off in Harrogate to get some bits from Betty's and look around Harrogate because it's so beautiful. But then also, I'd googled yarn shops and we ended up kind of stopping in one and I was like hey we can go like to this yarn shop in this place and so they I think I don't think they only sell Wensleydale but they sell a lot of Wensleydale so I saw so much beautiful stuff in there but the first thing I got was this 50 gram skein uh, which is 72% wool, 40% mohair, 40% nylon, and has 135 meters. Not entirely sure what I'm going to do with it, but I saw it and fell in love. And I think they only had one of these, so I couldn't get like 100 grams. But I was like, it will be used for something. So I just thought that was so beautiful. And the nylon, the fact that it has nylon mohair in it as well, I thought was just beautiful. So there's that. And then uh, this is a hand-dyed 100% Wensleydale wool, I think. So it's kind of this like greeny teal color, um, which I thought was beautiful as well. So Wensleydale is interesting as a breed because I've heard people find it quite scratchy and I do think it's a little bit rougher once it's knitted up but then I think it softens with wear but I, I don't mind it. Um, so I thought that was beautiful and then the kind of main thing is I bought a few colours of their I think it's like their proper like traditional wool so it's a four ply 100% Wensleydale uh, and I got a couple of colours. I got two of the green, one of this aubergine, one of this kind of rust colour, a neutral and this kind of blue. Now there's a couple of things I was thinking about these, uh, about with these. One is Skandia's Matchy Matchy Club with the cowl that she's already released. Um, I thought this cream would go well with one of these colors for that. And then the other ones as well, I was like, they will find a use and they're also relatively affordable. And I was like, I don't know if I'll ever, you can order from them online, but I was like, I don't know if I'll ever come back into the shop. So I just wanted to pick up a few different colors of that. 
And that is everything, I believe. I feel like I was a bit rushed just because I feel like I'm just stressing with the move and wanting to get that giveaway sorted. Um, but so please do make sure with the giveaway that you, if you are interested, um, it, to make sure you've liked the video, that you've subscribed, um, and do leave a comment below and just put the word advent in the advent calendar in there somewhere. Either just advent, advent calendar, that will be good. And if you're not interested but want to leave a comment, you still can because I'm going to be specifically looking for the word advent or advent calendar. So if that is something you want to win um, for my English video, I am limiting it to people in the UK because otherwise shipping just gets too expensive. But if, you, if you're not in the UK, but you are in Europe, <laughs> you can um, comment on my German video, which will come out soon as well. And even if you just comment in English because you don't speak German, that's fine. Your entry will still count. Um, just because I want to try and keep it separate. But you could also comment here and just let me know that you're not based in the UK so I have to give you the European one which I'll send once I'm in Austria either way we'll make it work I've like I said I think I've got four in total to give away but I'm kind of open to how I split it all up it kind of depends on how many people enter and things like that but so if you're interested just leave the comment either here you could also go to my German video just you know, if you want to win another one. Well, not another one, if you want to have more chances. And I'll probably also do an Instagram post. But we'll see. But four people will win something. An advent calendar. Hand wound by me <laughs> into little balls. And hand packed and everything. So if you're interested, leave a comment below. Make sure you're subscribed. And I think that's it. The only other thing I was going to say is I have had my Viva, my PhD defense. Now I just have to do my corrections, but I'm starting my postdoc on the 1st of November, which I'll have to start from here and then probably work on it while I'm still in Austria. And then I've been slowly looking for a place in Germany. Um, and yes so that's why my parents came they wanted to be here when I had my defense and it was so lovely having them here and getting to go to the Dales and stuff but anyway I could just ramble on this video is long enough thank you for watching please do make sure to leave that comment if you want to win like I said I don't care if you've already got an advent calendar two three however many if you want this one which is a collection of I think it's only English dyes. It's all hand dyed. But I think it is just English dyes. If you want to win it, leave that comment. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in my next video, which might be in Austria. We'll see. Bye.